very good afternoon to all of you. How have all you been doing in the last one week? Today, I'll be talking on a very simple topic again. It's basically talking about employees, you know, who are burning out. Now, employees burnout has been a contributing factor, right, in the great resignation that we've been talking about. And it is crucial, right, for every, uh, or for basically employers in general to understand how to prevent employee but now, I mean, we can't prevent it 100%, right? but at least, you know, uh, we need to do something about it, right? So let us look at some of the uh, causes of employees burning out and what can we do to prevent this from happening. Now, engagement helps prevent employee burnout. Do you agree with that? Everyone knows that you have to work hard right, if you want to be successful but even challenging work has its limit now you can push yourself too far or you can take too few breaks you know not enough holidays not enough rest and you end up with a bad case of burnout then all your challenging work may actually wind up counter productive instead of being productive it is counter productive so I talk to a lot of, uh, you know, business uh, men, business owners, leaders um, who are eager to do what, you know, that they are able to do in order to achieve some balance in their lives and to prevent burnout as best as they can. Now, it seems to me that the first step towards preventing burnout is you need to understand what really causes burnout. So let's take a quick look at some of the um, signs, you know, behind this uh, burning out. Now, why employee burnout? Let's look at it, right? All of us have uh, unconscious needs. Uh, may it be physical, may it be mental or emotional, right? And we also have demands within our professional lives. So burnout comes when there is a mismatch right there's a mismatch between the needs and the demands for example burnout may happen to an ongoing uh, let's say accountant who seeks to make new friendship uh, but whose job offers little opportunity to do so you know because they are very confined to what they do um, or perhaps to uh, another manager who does not enjoy taking center stage or being in leadership role. So, in both the examples, there is a mismatch between the employee's individual needs and the requirement of the job. So, most companies were affected by employee burnout at least in the last two or three years. Don't you agree? And at least one company that I know, which is very interesting, have given all their employees a week off. Can you imagine? give one week off right to all the employees to re-energize themselves all right that's interesting now the next one is the implications of burnout so what does this really tell us about burnout you have certain uh, needs to be truly motivated and energized when your daily responsibilities meet those needs you will resist burnout. A good place to start is with a self-inventory. You check yourself. Admittedly, there is where this is where things get a little more complicated. But it is still worthwhile, all right, to ask yourself the following question. Right? Number one, you can say, uh, what motivates you? Think through the task or responsibilities that leave you feeling the most pumped up, you know, or the most energized. Next question, which daily activities or responsibilities that drain you out the most? Right, These are going to be the things that uh, you actually dread the most, right? Now, how emotionally satisfied does your job really leave you? And do you think of uh, a change of position is needed to have um, truly satisfying work life? Or how well are your employees personality types and internal motivations paired with their responsibilities. Now, if your team uh, is low on motivation or they are low on energy, it could be because you have given everyone uh, roles that, you know, does not fit. 
um, interventions that prevent or repair such mismatch, mismatch could increase the well-being at work and reduce the risk of burnout. So there's still time for you, you know, to act and to be proactive, even if your needs and your daily demands are not well matched. Now, how to prevent employee burnout? Now, this is the $1 million question, right? <laughs> Today, every employees are, I mean, basically today's employees are generally overworked, uh, especially in our Asian context, yeah? Asian society context. So they are overstressed. Well, according to many studies that's done lately. So it is a critical issue. Well, not least because it impacts the bottom line of your business. Overwhelmed, burnout employees simply, they are not as productive or as energetic or as creative, you know, as problem solvers. So this way, the way to beat this kind of burnout is through engagement. The word here is engagement. Bringing your employees into a better understanding of the big picture and their place within it. Um, employees will not feel like they are drowning all right, in a tankless work uh, environment when they see okay, the vision, when they see right, the big vision you know, and how their role or their part can make a difference. Um, when you talk about engagement, basically I can think of three ways that you can help your employees to stay engaged rather than get burnt out. Right, so you need to give your employees someone to talk to. Right, number one, employees who feel alone are more likely to struggle with burnout. So you need to create a small discussion group in your company to help the employees feel connected. They need to feel connected, all right, with one another and to a broader sense of community. Discussion groups should be safe spaces where anything can be said. Okay, and you must remember this. Don't neglect the little things, right? Secondly, you can encourage employees to go for a quick walk around the building. You allow them to cut out an hour, for example, every Friday. They can take an hour early off, you know, or offer an afternoon to decorate or to clean or to do something, you know, for the office, for the holidays. You know, since Malaysia, we have got so many festive holidays, we can take opportunities to do that. And these little things do add up and it helps the, to de-stress our employees, all right? And they will, you know, they will feel that they are appreciated in that sense. And number three, keep the focus on productivity. Things like how many hours your employees spend at the office does not really matter. Do you agree with that? <laughs> All right. Actually, these are not meaningful metrics these days. They must or you must focus on how much they are accomplishing towards your broader goals and objectives. That And that should be your goal. Right, so this is a very, very short sharing here, but I hope it really helps you uh, to engage with your employees in order to prevent, if not curb, burnouts. So I am Philip Leong. I'm doing what I'm doing because leadership matters, because people matter. Stay safe, stay healthy, and be a blessing. See you in my next video. Bye-bye.